Ilya Teporia is an absolute menace. Just ask the fan that asked him for a shot to the body. More balls than I have. Anyway, the end result doesn't seem to be much different even when he's fighting professional fighters. In this video, we'll break down the anatomy and the kinesiology that underlies some of his best knockouts. We'll start by doing something a little bit different than usual. I want to show you Teporia's consistency with the movement. So we'll be switching back and forth between two clips in one. One will be his knockout against Herbert and the other is his knockout against Jackson. Okay, so we've got two views here, Herbert and Jackson. And so we're gonna look at all the way through with Herbert and then we're going to look at it all the way through with Jackson and then we're going to notice the similarities particularly in the way that he finishes, Teporia finishes these two combos. Okay, so to start off, to start off he's when he's slipping and jabbing here he's already loading that front leg, right, and when he comes with the overhand it doesn't necessarily land the way that he wants it to. But whenever he, so he's already got that the front leg loaded now, his hips and his shoulder dissociation isn't super good here, but you'll see in a second that he's kind of setting it up. He's got a little lag back here, so the stretch shortened cycle isn't in full effect, uh, but you'll watch here when he follows up with this left. I mean, that is textbook. So his, the front of his hips are facing the crypto sign, and his shoulders, the plane of the shoulders, are like shooting towards Manscaped. He's actually, his chest is facing over here towards the cage. Really good whipping effect, and if you didn't see my last video on the stretch shortened cycle, go ahead and watch it. The external obliques and the pec major and anterior delt are really heavily, quickly, eccentrically loaded here, and then it comes out of the amortization phase, really quick amortization phase, and hits a really nice shot to the body. And then as he, and now watch his hips again, after the shot to the body, he immediately starts switching his hips, and if you remember my overhand breakdown, you have to either step off the center line or externally rotate your hip like he's doing here to give the illusion or to at least let the body rotate as if you were off the center line. Okay, so left external rotation at the hip, it allows for lumbopelvic rotation to the left, left lateral side bending, and then left thoracolum or excuse me, thoracic rotation, uh, and then he's got obviously the arm behind him using that stretch shortened cycle again, and Incredible contact made, gets that really good whipping motion. If you haven't seen my knockout physiology video, I'll link that in the description. We know that that axonal damage, that quick rotation, uh, the axonal damage is greater whenever there's a quick rotation or a lateral side bending force uh, and is likely the cause of that acute loss of consciousness as far as we know right now. All right, so let's go over to Jackson. So I, I wanted to show the beginning of this because we haven't looked at the uppercut yet. If you want me to break down the uppercut, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do another video on that. But he does a really good uppercut here. Um, the difference, just really briefly, the difference between the uppercut and a lot of other punches is the bicep is a lot more involved. Okay, he's got really good thoracic rotation, uh, it, like in an uppercut. He's a little far away. He's, he's reaching a little bit. That was really good contact. And so the bicep is a, a shoulder flexor and an elbow flexor. So that means that it's heavily involved since the shoulder is flexing and the elbow is flexing and when you make contact if it wasn't involved the arm would just kind of straighten out so really a lot of bicep movement there or use of the bicep there when he comes back for the left boom we notice it again hips facing the cage shoulders probably on a 45 degree angle relative to his hips really good shot to the body that upper right quadrant looks like so could have been a liver shot usually those are more on the flank though now he disengages, and this is the part we're gonna watch and compare both. So as he steps through, hips and shoulders, contact. All right. And right here, as he steps through, hip and shoulder, or contact to the body this time. Now, the difference is, Look at the similarity in the position of the body here, even though he's in different environments. He's adjusting to the, the micro differences in the environment, right? This is, he's already slipped here. In this, he knows he's about to eat a left hook, albeit a weak one. So contact, 
we know stepping across the center line or at least externally rotating that hip so that knee is pointing off of the center line dives down typically they dive down with the head but he keeps it up right here left side bending with left rotation really good contact steps off or doesn't step off that time right so left external rotation of the hip dives down contact so particularly with that left hook overhand very consistent you know he made contact here with Jackson's face uh, and with Herbert he made contact with the body uh, but just the left hook to set up that overhand he's got down real he, he's got down pat and he's, he's very good at it not to mention how powerful he is and how well he dissociates his hips and his shoulders uh, it just makes him really really effective next we're going to break down a series of combos into Porius fight against Volkanovski The reason I like this knockout against Volkanovski is because it really shows the power of setting up and being mechanically efficient once you've planted your feet after maybe overextending a little bit. So he, he recognizes, I think, that Volkanovski overextended a little bit with this jab. And as soon as he successfully slips it, he starts to close the distance, which is good, right? And a lot of these strikes aren't super significant. This left one definitely is. Um, but notice how his center of mass is moving forward, but he's not actually kind of stapled to the ground, which we know for force production is, is a really good thing. The hip and shoulder dissociation could be better. Again, he's not planting his foot on, the, on the, his back leg on the ground. He's kind of on his front foot here, but it makes really good contact. Now, the center of mass coming forward probably would have been a, worked a little bit better for him, but with a hook, the force is coming across the face rather than through the sagittal plane in the front of the face. Uh, so, but still lands. The right doesn't, but it's just enough to let Volkanovski know that he's still coming forward. And in, right here, instead of setting up, just continuing to throw that fury of punches and setting up that uh, the left hook with the overhand, he plants his feet, kind of posts, and I don't know why Volkanovski's trying to tie up here uh, from that far away, but he is. So he posts and he sets his feet. Once he sets his feet, we know that he gets that, you can't really see it down here, but he gets that good step off the center line. And he's kind of already off the center line there, but the good external rotation at the hip, he starts to rotate his, he starts to rotate lumbosacral and thoracic spine. And then he makes really good contact, catches him right on the chin. Another thing I want you to notice, last time we saw with, with the Jackson knockout, his head was high and his thoracic spine was kind of extended. So, it may not be a lot, but I think the average head weighs like something like 10 pounds or something like that. So once you get the head down, he kind of dives his head down a little bit more here. I think it actually adds to the power. It, it adds to the whipping effect. And he's not necessarily laterally flexing. I would say volitionally, he's not actually using those muscles. He's just letting gravity, he's letting his, bot, his head go with his body because he is crunching down to the left, left lateral flexion with those muscles that we've talked about, like the quadratus lumborum, internal and external obliques. Uh, his arm is whipping through that stretch reflex, makes contact with the head or with his chin. But I just wanted you to notice the difference there. When you dive that head down, I think it gives you a much better whipping effect, although you may not be as accurate since you aren't technically looking right at your opponent. So really good job here. And another good use of his mechanics, uh, if he threw that left hook, I don't know that he would have been set up quite as well to hit that overhand against Volkanovski. But awesome stuff. Let's, let's watch all the way through full speed. This is in slow-mo, so it'll be easier to watch. As you can see, Taporia's accuracy and trunk control are really good display in these clips. I am one of the many who's looking forward to his fight against Max Holloway, another insanely accurate striker. I actually covered his knockout against Justin Gaethje. If you haven't seen that already, go ahead and give it a watch. It'll be linked in the description below. And as always, if you have any suggestions on other movements or fighters you want me to break down, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.